hey what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel let's build it so we are going to continue our last project related to the core data i have created the playlist for that so in the last video we have created a project in which we are saving our username and age into the core data and then loading them here in the list so if i write xyz and give age and save so it will be shown here okay so in this uh, in the last tutorial we are just simply write uh, database functions here to store the data into the database and then saving them saving them and uh, reloading the table view so that it can be shown table views okay and if you have not watched my uh, last video uh, regarding this so i will recommend you to go and watch that video first i will add the video dis uh, link in my description of this video also i uh, add the card so you can click on the card right now displaying on the screen so you can directly navigate to that video okay so it will be more clear to you uh, that what we have done in the last video uh, we have created this generic function uh, i have given step by step instructions like how everything is working and how we have created this so uh, this is the generic function and it can take any kind of uh, core data model into it and then we can fetch it and uh, like save it okay so we have added only two uh, uh, functions in our last video we are going to add one more function to delete each row like uh, swipe uh, right to left and uh, then we can delete each entity uh, each object from our uh, user entity from the core database okay so this is the uh, li like the third option of the crude operations and the main main thing we are going to implement in this tutorial is uh, fetching the data from the api and then saving it saving them uh, into the core data and then showing them on the view controller so i will show you step by step so it will be more clear to you and uh, it is very easy so you don't have to uh, think like it will be a very difficult thing and it will be very synchronous thing uh, you don't have to write every anything on uh, like on the view controller for saving the data and then maintaining the state then fetching the data from uh, like core data or api so you don't to get confused in this i will show you how easy it is okay so uh, let's just let's get started first <coughs> so first let me uh, show you how you can write a delete function here so that it can be deleted We will create a delete and uh, we are going to create it a generic function so and as manage object kind of variable we are going to take parameter uh, in the form of and as manage object and uh, here will be an object of kind e. all right function of sorry function delete so for the delete operation we will write view context dot delete and we will pass the object and then we will call the save function so it can remove from the database properly okay now uh, we will need to add the table view delegate method for uh, enabling the swipe on the cells so we will write can add it row this function uh, will allow us to add it or uh, enabling the edit mode on the cell so we will return true you can add your own condition here if you don't want a particular cell to be deleted so you can add here okay 
and then we will need editing style editing style for row so we will check here if editing style equal to equal to delete if our action is delete then what we are going to do first we will fetch the user of uh, the user from the array of users so i will prefer to use guard like user equal to users and we will fetch it from index path dot row on which we have performed the swipe of swipe gesture else return if it is failed to get the user then it will return and we won't get a crash then we will do something like cell dot data this then delete I did not go to let me build it now it should be here we will pass the user object here that we have safely unwrapped then we also need to remove it from the array list of array remove it index path dot row okay and finally we will remove the cell on the delete row and it takes a array of index path so we will pass this and for the animation I will use automate let me build it <coughs> yeah build successfully now let me try to run it again to see if it is working or not <coughs> see it. yeah so if I swipe left then you can see here is delete button if we click on it oh it get crashed all right let's check why it is crashing i think we should use the begin update and the end update it might be a call for that because we are performing some updates here. Let's do it again. So you can see the object was deleted from the database, but it was uh, that set due to the table view. If I uh, delete the first object, yeah, you can see it is deleted. Now let me add it again. Create. Go to P. Five. Okay. Now if I want to delete this uh, middle row, I will simply click on the delete, and you can see it is get, it get deleted. If I delete this one, this is also deleted. So our delete function is working fine. Now let's move to main implementation, uh, main implementation of uh, API. Okay, so for that I have a API from which we can fetch user data. Okay, let me show you. This is a free API and for the sampling for the demo purpose. If you get on this, you can see here we have uh, some object of users. Let me show you the other user. See, so it has a five object, and each object has a few parameters like ID, email, person, last name, and after. So these are the objects, so these are the uh, values we are going to store in our core database. Okay, and uh, then we will show all these values on our table. So, 
uh, I will create a new API handler for that. Class API handler. I will create a response variable. Attic let share API handler like this. Then we will create our function. Function will be a same user. You can give any name here. Completion and it will be notified to the calling controller that the operation is performed and the data has been uh, received. So we will use the completion to notify that. So first we will need to create a request here. So like let me quickly do this. All right, so we have write a function here okay uh, for syncing the users and we have created a set uh, data task with the session URL session in which we have provided a request uh, for this API and it is kind of get and we are getting an uh, error here so it is uh, due to the escaping let me add the escaping thing here okay so after we receive the data uh, in this block, we will convert this data into the JSON object like this. Okay, and uh, we will print it here. And let me call it from view will appear maybe or view did appear. API handler dot shared dot sync users okay so let's try to run it if we get a response here okay we have received something here let's print it all right so you can see we got the response and all the objects so now the next thing is we need to modify our core data entity with this parameter and of course our user model also okay so let's go to this the core data and here we need to change this avatar to string email this is also a string first name string last name this is also string and at last id this is going to be an entity 16 okay now go back to our user model so in the user model we have to change these parameters also avatar is a string id is 10 16 
then email which is also a string then we have left two more variables that is first name and last name okay so this is our core data model and uh, for your information i uh, i will tell you that this is not a codable model uh, that we can use this model or uh, this object also in the response but uh, then you have to do some uh, manual code writing here like in uh, fetching the data from this uh, json then getting an array then uh, create a loop and uh, with which you can save this user into the code data so let me show you another way of doing this so what we are going to do we will create a user server model in which we will have the same properties but it can uh, have a you know one more function which will convert a server model to the user object so it will be a more easy and uh, separate thing so it is written separately so it will be more easy to use and more easy to understand server model so i create it maybe a struct you can use a struct and uh, this is going to be a codable okay so we have this let's create all these variables avatar which is of string type let email which is also of string type let first name let's copy here and uh, string type let last name of string type and let id of int uh, we can we can put it as int only okay so let's go back to here so you can see uh, in our response the array is coming in data field and uh, apart from this we have other fields also like uh, the page total per page total pages we don't need this add uh, because i don't think it is uh, any of our use but we can surely have these values because maybe you can have some parameters like message and some uh, like predefined format for the api response and the main for, uh, response is coming in the data field so uh, i will show you creating a generic api handler uh, api response object also here so what you gonna do is public struct api response response and uh, it is my generic type which is codable and class is also codable defined okay and here what so what is the structure of our uh, response is so we have a variable so i will create it a public let page which is of int type right then public let total pages which is also of int type then public let total and public let and per underscore or you can copy it from here per page which is of int type and so we have used this page total per page and total pages we are not going to use this otherwise we have to create another table for it but we are not going to use it anywhere in our application so we can uh, like ignore it 
okay and the main thing we are needed here is the data field so public data and it is kind of t okay so whatever we are sending from here uh, like whatever object we are passing here it will be uh, passed to that right so if we are pass, uh, passing the user object inside the api response so the data will be uh, kind of user object okay so let's go to here again here what we will do let model equal to try json decoder and decode of type so it is asking for type so what we are going to pass it here api response and in which with angular brackets we will pass our user server model and then self from the data so we have the data all right uh, we are passing this array here because our data is kind of array if it is a single object then we will pass a single uh, user server model without this brackets okay so we will get this and then we need to convert this model uh, these objects because uh, right now we have uh, these object as a user server model but we want to have it as a user model uh, that are and as manage object and uh, this this can be saved in the core data only we can uh, we can't save this model into the core data so for doing that what we are going to do model dot we have the data you can see array of user server model so we will use the for each and the for each object we are going to do dollar uh, zero or i think we need to first write a function here so it can be saved in the uh, database okay so i will write a function here function store or you can name it as a save or whatever you want okay guard let user equal to uh, we will need a database instance here so let me create a static plate database database handler dot i think we have created uh, okay okay so what we are how we will uh, use this because it's a static function database dot add user dot self else we can simply return it so as we have the user object here so we can set our values into it avatar equal to avatar user dot email equal to email user dot first name equal to first name user dot last name equal to last name and user dot id equal to id why it is not okay because our uh, user this model have a in 16 uh, type for the id but we have integer for uh, this server model so we will parse it like this in 16 and id so it's good to go now now we will again go to the api handler and simply call the store function 
so what this uh, line of code will do it will iterate each uh, user server model that is dollar zero and store it into the core data okay and uh, i think we haven't used the save yet so if we are not going to save it it won't work okay so now let's try to run it uh, one second we also need to reload here the table view or maybe we need to fetch uh, users from the database again after the completion is done so what i will do here is cell dot user equal to this and cell dot database equal to this okay so it will fetch the users from the table and then uh, assign to the user array and on the read set it will get refreshed i think we will need to use a dispatch queue here otherwise it will give you an uh, error not error exactly but the warning let's try to run it let's see if it is working or not oh we have some errors okay so we don't need this anymore because we are not going to use the save function so let me comment it out and also here we will use the first name for now i'm going to use the first name of this let's try to run it okay we have some warnings but uh, we have got the response Try to do it. Okay, so you can see we have all these objects here, all these uh, users from the API. See, we have the George, Janet, Emma, Eve, Charles, and Tracy. Okay. So we have this warning. So let's see where it is in the database handler. UI application delegate must be used on the main thread only. Alright, so we will fix it. It is uh, occurring because we are using the for loop here and it is executing like uh, in the iterating manner. So it should be called only one or otherwise you can call it on the uh, main thread. So I am going to use an init function here in which uh, I can uh, like initialize it only once. So let me do this first. This. And then we can remove this line from here. And I also want to have it as a singleton class. So I will write share and then database handler. So whoever want to use this class need to access it from the shared, uh, like the instance variable, singleton object. So it will give us some error, I think. So it will not give an error. We need to use the database class everywhere with the help of uh, the shared object. So let me see where we are uh, using it. Here it is. I will call it shared. Okay. In the API handler, we don't have it. In the we have it here also. The shared. Now let me try to run it. Right now it will append 
the data again and again every time we run it because we are not deleting the previous data before running it or we are not matching the old data before inserting the new one so you can see it will append the data one by one into it but if I try to delete it it will delete it okay you can see so if I run it again uh, these three values will stay uh, stay here and uh, all the six objects will be appended uh, after that three values so we have the George, Charles and the Tracy if I run it again you can see we had this and after getting the response we have appended these values again in the, into the array so the benefit for this core data is uh, like we can show the details that is already persistent in our database to the user for uh, for the first launch uh, like when uh, he is uh, opening the app so he won't see the blank screen he will get some details and after we get in the response it will get updated so you can write your own logic for this uh, okay and uh, we are showing only the first name uh, in the next video I am going to show you how you can actually add the images uh, image view here so we will show the in, uh, user image that we are getting from the database from uh, this API okay so we will show this uh, user image here and we will also use this custom cell here we will design it accordingly uh, like showing uh, adding the user image here the name first name and the last name and also the email okay so it will be uh, more user friendly and uh, I think this is it for uh, the today's lesson and I think it will help you a lot because many people are asking me about this video uh, saving the API response into, into the core data and then uh, showing this data into the controllers so they get confused how, uh, how it is done so it is a very uh, easy approach I used in my many applications and uh, there are might be many options for this and many way for this users are doing it in a different way but uh, i like this approach only because it is very easy and very clean we are using the generic functions so we don't have to write uh, the functions for every user object or manage object we can pass it in each of our functions because they are the uh, generic function okay so we'll meet in the next video so stay tuned on my channel guys and if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please do subscribe and share it with your friends so they can also learn this new things okay thank you bye bye